Hi everyone, we're in dragon mode again and this is the one we've all been waiting for. For a big monster mould that I've had shipped over from Australia. Now, um, please tell me, am I, am I the only one in the UK that's got one of these at the moment? I wouldn't be surprised because it does cost an awful lot to import and it quite rightly is not a cheap mould in the first place. It's from pouring your heart out. Her moulds are beautiful and the quality of this, it's so soft, it's going to be, re re well it is because I've used it once, really easy to demould. As you can see it's not as clean as it should be. Um, I'll tell you the story of why as we go along. I've um, been having a bit of a nightmare here. Nothing to do with the quality of the mould, this is absolutely outstanding. I'll fill you in as we go. What we're going to be doing is like I've done with this little guy here, we're going to be coating it with mica powders inside. This one's been done simply because I've got an order in for a green and blue one. So I thought we might as well do that at the same time. So we're going to be coating it with various mica powders. I've discovered the flakes don't tend to stick so well on this one. So we're going to be using these, the, Ch the chameleon powders from Let's Resin, from some nail art firm. Um, some more from a nail art firm you know I'm just going to be chucking in all of those sort of things what I'm going to do is I'll start painting and then I will basically cut and fast forward because I'm sure you've seen people including me painting the mica into mold before but I'll just make a start first on camera for the benefit of those who haven't just as I can explain a few things got a set of brushes here these are just makeup brushes just bought a big set cheap off Amazon. Now, what I'm gonna do with, first of all, the way you have to think about these mica powders is the first one you put in, the first layer, the one that's in contact with the actual silicon, is the one that you will see. Anything you put over it, you won't see. So. I'm finding the best way to do this is to put in any details you want first. And this is a gold mica powder from Let's Resin. So put your details in first, like so. So I shall carry on all around with that while I'm talking to you. I'll get all the detail in and then when I get to the point where we're just splashing colour in, I'll, um, I'll fast forward it for you. Now, what I should tell you uh, about what happened with this mould, honestly, I I was almost in tears. Those who know me know I blot quite easily. <laughs> anyway, this this was this is a biggie. This little mould, little mould. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. This mould had made its way all the way from Australia. I kept fondling it. I was so excited. I couldn't. I just have no words for how excited I was. I wanted to cuddle it, I wanted to, you know, I just sat there and wriggled it around in my hands for ages because it just felt so nice. It's it's the softest, most beautiful silicon. Uh, eventually, I thought, after a couple of weeks, I'm, I, I really, I'm going to have to do something with that mould. This is getting silly now. But I was kind of frightened because it was, you know, as I keep saying, quite rightly, blinking expensive. Um, I'll put you the link for it down below. You'll see what I mean. But... If you watch Pouring Your Heart Out's channel, which I'm sure many of you do, it's one of the one of the best known ones probably, um, you will understand why it's expensive. It's worth every single penny. Now, so back to the story. I sat there thinking, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, let's get brave, let's get in there, let's let's get this dragon done. So I poddled upstairs to where this craft room is. I opened up my brand new box of resins. I stirred them up, mixed them very carefully. I didn't want anything to go wrong. Mix them up, pop them, put some black in, put them in the mould. Of course, I'd already done all this part, so the mould is completely covered in mica powder. And I, and I spritz the surface, I filmed it as well, <laughs> spritz the surface with um, the alcohol ink, alcohol ink, alcohol, get your words in order Trace, this is what happens when I try to multitask, um, yeah so I uh, spritzed it with alcohol, 
didn't dare go anywhere near it with a heat gun. I think this silicon will be more resistant to heat guns than the cheap mould are. Um, I say that largely because I've seen the lady from pouring your heart out using heat guns on them. Just being careful not to zap the silicon with it, I think. Anyway, so all, all's looking good. All is looking very good indeed. Until the next morning. Came out all exciting, came out of my bedroom before I'd even changed out of my pyjamas. Thought, yeah, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's demould. And it was still like water. The resin was no thicker, in fact, possibly thinner than when it came out of the bottle. And at this point I start having kittens, as you can imagine. It's formed a weird skin on the top. Anyway, turn the heat mat on. I thought, well, let's give that a try. Um, started panicking. Told my other half all about it. He kind of got it because he, he knew the story of the mould and how it had travelled all the way from Australia and all that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> another day later, it's still like water. And it looked horrible. It was turning into a horrible, horrible mess. And it continued and then I picked up the two bottles that are, that were still still in the box. They were the only two bottles I'd got because I had run out and they were both, both part B. So anyway, at least we got an explanation for why it wasn't curing. I thought, right, let's try and tip this out and mix some part A in with it. So I did. A horrible mess. I mean, this is a big mould to manhandle uh, and it's it's very floppy and bendy. So you can imagine the horrible mess I was creating. Uh, well, and Mark, actually. Mark was helping me with this too. A lot. An awful lot. Um, it was everywhere. It was black. It was gooey. It was... It, had go it, oh, it was horrible. Anyway, I then mixed in a load of part A because luckily I had got some part A still kicking around. I managed to find some out of my spare bottles stash. So I mixed in a load of part A and put it back in. What happened? Another gloopy mess. Now you're probably all saying why didn't you just replace all of the resin? I was trying to save it. Remember I was nearly out of resin because this uses a lot and that was the bottle that I had, the bottles that I just had in fresh. So yeah anyway, yeah you guessed it. What happened? another gloopy mess. I did get a big lump out the middle though. Um, oh, it was horrible. Anyway, in the end, Mark tipped it upside down for me, left it in a, left it on a tray in the kitchen where we thought it would be a little bit warmer um, and on a sheet of card and gradually most of it drained out. But because I'd got all the mica powder in the mould, it made um, a total mess. It, it was the resin was stuck to the mold. It was still semi liquidy, uh, so it wouldn't peel off. It was just horrible. So I have spent, I think, two days, basically doing what I'm doing now, trying to get it off. Only what I'm doing now is just where I've gone. I've got a bit of mica powder where I didn't want it. That's all. Um, I've got it mostly clean. I've put uh, the I've put some black resin through it again, and made a pretty awesome black dragon out of it. I'm going to call it the Ash Dragon because that's what it looks like it should be called. And it has now got most of the cleaning up, making it worse. It has got most of the most of the mess out of it. As you could see before I started doing this, there were still some bits here and there. Even the back was filthy though at first. Honestly, it was just a disgusting mess. And why couldn't it have just been with the cheap mould? Why did it have to be this one? Anyway, Let's Resin have just sent me another supply of resin. I did ask them for two bottles of part A. What have they done? They've sent me another set of A and B, which is fine. So I've got enough resin to do this. I am kind of thinking I might go in with the deep pour resin instead. Anyway, I don't know yet. But... Either way, it does mean I can make this. I've also got two spare bottles of Part B. 
go figure. Anyway, so that's what happened to the poor mould. Um, it's testimony to the quality of the mould, how well eventually it has cleaned up. And I'm thinking after a couple more usages, it will be, it will be fine. So um, this is the bit where I'm going to cut and fast forward. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to try to blend the colours as I go. These are the nail art micas, but I'm just going to be using all sorts. Now remember, I can go straight over the gold because it won't show on the other side. What I'm putting in now won't. So I'm trying to work out which bits of him are wing and which are body and so on. Because I want bluey purpley wings and a greeny body. So, cutting here to fast forward. I'll catch up with you at the end. I'm back in the room. Um, I'm starting to have a bit of a meltdown now about whether I've got enough green to go around his tail. And then I decided that actually, you know what, there's no point having a meltdown, just change colours part way round. Why not? So I'm just wanting to make sure, well I've still got some green left, that I've got the green where I want. These, by the way, uh, I'm still on the nail art powders here. And they are the ones that they say they're mirror finish. So they do colour flip a bit as well, but they're the ones that they say are mirror finish, like chrome finish. So it'll be interesting to see how well these turn out. I have to say it's sticking to this mould incredibly. I hope you're seeing how beautiful this looks. I have just got this on daylight at the moment. I'll put it on, I'll put my light on in a bit. But it's just such a nice day outside here. The snow's gone, the sun's out. You, can you might be able to hear birdsong. Um, I've got my window open, of course, for the ventilation when I get the resin on the go. Um, yeah, so I thought we'd just run with daylight for a bit and see what happens. I'm um, just looking back at this little mould. I wonder if I've got enough green in there, but of course I can't see because I've put the colours over the top. Right, that appears to be all the green gone, so I'll wash that pot out because I'm sure I'll find another use for it. But drawers full of little pots, you never know when they're going to come in handy. Right, getting the mica off my hands. Of course it's gone everywhere. Uh, be aware, folks, you probably don't need full crazy PPE just for you when you're just doing the mica bit, but it does blow everywhere so it might be wise to is that flakes it might be wise to just wear off a, a dust mask now i've discovered ah, that's a flakes one i've discovered that the flakes don't stick terribly well so we won't be using that one we've got let's go into these blues i think what's that one that's a blue green as well but let's go straight in for the dark blue this is from that nail art set as well oh look at that can get myself a different brush now this is going to be quite a big area so because it's going to be the wings so i'm going in with a big brush and i think what i'm going to do oh look at that i think what i'm going to do afterwards um just to make sure that i've got no little gaps i'm going to brush over the back with gold now some of you might have seen in my other videos the one where I make the dragon plaque is the one in particular I'm referring to. That I take off some of the mica that I've put on before I put that last layer of gold in. And the reason for that is it will pick out highlights for me. 
So I think I'll do that. I'll try to do that on the scales in particular. So you see what I mean about not worrying about covering up the, the gold? Because it'll just show straight through the, and anyway because it's, it's the side that's in contact with the silicone. That was easy and quick, wasn't it? Yeah, so you won't, I'm just trying to make sure I've not missed any bits. Get a bit of blue in his arms, why not? Doesn't matter. Yeah. So the side, so the, the, whatever you put on first is the side that's going to show. Just checking, excuse this, it's going to look funny on camera, but I'm just checking to ma make sure I've got everywhere. Of course, the only bit that's missing now is the end of his tail, which I might do with this one. This is a different bluey colour. Hmm. Yeah, let's try it. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Again, it's a nail art one. I just wish they did the nail art ones in bigger pots because they come in such a range of colours. It's, it's crazy. Right, yes, as I said, I'm going to now take out some of the green not too much but I just kind of want to rub a little bit off can you see a little bit coming away there and it is just the green I'm going to do and it will be taking it just off the top of the spikes of his scales just a little bit because next job is to, that's it, that'll do it, just a bit, as I said. Next job is to just go around the whole thing in gold. Now, luckily, the gold I'm using is one of the big Let's Resin pots. So, we've got plenty, plenty of it. These golds from Let's Resin, well, it's a metallic set, actually. It's going to cover the whole thing. Um, yeah, the metallic set from Let's Resin was I forget how many is it five or six I'll put you a link below they are absolutely gorgeous you'll see I've done some um, dragons with these before the little baby ones I'll, I'll slap you some links for all the other dragon videos in my at the end of this video as well so you can you know if dragons are your thing you can go all through them now can you see there's that dust flying around everywhere everything's gonna sparkle which is no bad thing generally unless it's oh god i put too much on my brush there unless it's in your lungs so this is why i am suggesting um you might want to wear at least just like a dusty you know a dust prevention mask probably don't need your full ppe i'm gonna try and spread that around i put way too much in however you know if you've got your full ppe handy use it because now, you're going to need it for the next stage anyway, aren't you? Shake a bit off this time. Right, there we go. And take it round to the tail. So all that's done is made sure that I've picked up any bits that I've missed. Because you do miss bits. <laughs> um, and also, and also where I've taken off that a bit of the green at the tips of his scales, it'll have picked that up as well. Right, we're at resin stage now. Now, I'm not going to worry about all the surplus mica that's wafting around in there. It will just float to the surface. I could turn it upside down and tap it. Not going to, because I'm just going to, I'm just going to pour um, and it'll, it'll, it'll make for a funky background. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about that. Right then, uh, I'll be back shortly with my resin mixed up. So I've got this resin mixed up. I'm just making sure the black pigment is well mixed in. At the moment, I, I'm not quite sure how much this mould will take uh, and I've got that little mould as well to do. The one I formerly called the big mould. <laughs> um, I could have filled it up with water first of course and measured it and all that sort of thing. But I thought no, let's just go in with it. The 600 millilitres here so far. Let's see how far that goes. I know it's going to use a lot. It just is. It's big. That isn't going to be enough, I can see. So, while you're watching this doing its thing, 
I'm going to zoom you in a bit. There you go. Watch what that mica's doing as it's coming up to the surface. Oops, let's try and get you positioned a bit better. There you go. You've got the big area there. So uh, while you're watching the mica coming in from the sides, that is the surplus. What is actually stuck to the, well, yeah, what I painted onto the silicon is safe. That won't be coming off. I'm going to mix up just another 200 millilitres. Let's see how it goes. So 100 of each uh, and carry on filling these up. Right now for the exciting bit, we're about to demould. So being impatient as always, it is a little bit soft still. Um, this is tail is. And it's quite thin. I don't think my table was quite level. I can do that next time. Get that sorted. So I'm just loosening it off all the way around. Any little surplus bits like this we can trim off afterwards. As you can see, I've got a bit carried away with the resin at one point. Trying to be careful around these little delicate bits. Here we go, I'm gonna really get in there now and start pulling. As you can see, I've made a right old mess of the mold again. But this time, it should just clean up really easily. Getting him out is the challenge. <laughs> there are lots of nooks and crannies with this one. Here he comes. These are the tricky bits around the wings and the back feet. So if I loosen it up like that. And then just keep pulling. Now this is a high quality mould. It's going to, <laughs> it's not going to tear, I wouldn't think. So I can be quite rough with it, if anything. Here we go. Let's see what his little head looks like. Be careful with his mouth because his mouth is open, so the mould splits there. There we go, got that. Just hope I haven't got any bubbles in his horns and things. Blimey, this is a mould and a half. Here we go. Right, are we ready, folks? Are we ready? Oh, I say, look at that. That is gorgeous. What a beautiful thing. Now, I need to paint his eyes in. I'll paint his little eyes in. Might add a few more touches of gold. I don't know about that. Wow. So thank you very much pouring your heart out for what a hell of a mould. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, I'm guessing you've watched this all the way through, folks, because you like dragons. So what I'm going to do is put you a load of links to other, other dragon themed videos. Um, so if you have a look at the screen at the top here, as this video ends, there'll be some that uh, I think you will like. Thank you to those who subscribed. It means an awful lot to me and I really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed already and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, then do subscribe and then I can let you know whenever there's a new video due out. So thanks again everyone and I'll see you for the next one.